Hey guys, welcome back to a pro wrestling podcast with Matt and Friends. I am your host, Matt Kazakowski. I am joined today by professional wrestler Trevor Eon. Trevor, how you doing, my man? Good. Super, awesome. super good. Awesome. Relaxing. Glad, glad to have you on here, my friend. I'm, I'm well, excited thank you about for having this. Me. Oh, absolutely, man. I, uh, you know, pro wrestling is my life. You know, I, I, I want I the best that. of the best on here. I want the most unique, the ones that stick out on my show. And obviously, you have a cool character. I, I love what you portray, man. It's absolutely awesome. You can see it with the red eyes, man. It's 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 so cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, man. I uh, like I said before we started. Um, I'm newer to your work, obviously. Um, found you through AEW Dark. Watched a lot of your stuff since then. Um, well, whatever I can find. Um, yeah. I actually watched your match against Trisha Dora today. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, awesome. that was a favorite. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we'll get into that a little later um let's start basic first things first um your earliest memories of pro wrestling uh were you a fan of it growing up did you get into it later on um yeah like I've been a wrestling fan since I was like five and I remember I like I still I don't remember what day it was or how old I was exactly but it was somewhere in the five to six range and I still remember to this day because I always tell the story my grandma was a big wrestling fan. And when I would get out of school, I would go to my grandma's house and she was, I just walked in her room one day and I saw these people on screen in these crazy outfits, like fighting. And I was like, what is that? And at the time I, I was already like reading comic books at that point. So I'm like, what is that? It looks like comic books, but it's people. It's like real people. And I just, I sat down and I was like this and stopped. Haven't been able to turn it off since. And then back then I was like telling people like, hey, I think I'm going to, I think I want to be a pro wrestler. And people were like, oh, but you're so small. And I'm like, well, I'm six. So <laughs> of course I'm too small. And the older I got, the more I thought about it. And then when I turned, it's funny because I originally was looking up schools when I turned 18. And then I was like, no, let me do something else. And I was just working like random jobs and stuff. And I was in a band for a little bit and like I rapped for a little while and then the wrestling bug would not go away. Like I kept thinking about it. So I got into boxing around 18, 19 and I was doing that pretty regularly in between working my two jobs. And I'm just like, you know what? Maybe, maybe I should try wrestling. No, no, no. I'm going to, I should probably fight. So, you know what? I'm going to just stick with boxing. I'm going to fight. And just the rest, it wouldn't leave my head. So eventually I was just like, you know what? Look, I'm like 24. I can try it. If I suck, I can go back and do something else. Or I can go back to boxing. It's fine. And here we are 10 years later. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. And, and that's crazy because, I, you know, like we were saying, I mean, you got a lot out of coming from your AEW dark match. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I think a lot of people actually took a, a notice to you after that, too. Um, and it was funny because when I started doing my research and stuff, I didn't know you wrestled for a, almost a decade now. Um, yeah. which is insane. Cause like I said, I mean, there's so many organizations, so many wrestlers out there that you don't even know who's who until yeah. something like that, that AEW dark opportunity comes around. And I mean, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, it's pretty wild. Oh, for sure. Um, did you have any specific idols growing up in pro wrestling? Oh yeah. I had a, had a, a lot of them. Um, uh, Macho man was probably my absolute favorite uh i was a big sting fan when i was a kid especially because i was like one of those kids who just kind of leaned toward like dark stuff so i liked sting a lot when he was like surfer sting but the second he turned into the crow i was just like oh he's the crow oh look at that and just i got super excited about that i was a big raven fan um because of wcw and growing up in atlanta i got exposed to japanese wrestling very very early so i was a big Muda fan, big Liger fan. I've gotten to meet both of them at this point, and I freaked out like a child. And I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> uh, Masato Tanaka, Edge, big, big, big Edge guy, big Christian guy too, actually. Um, who you say that now? like you're surprised at it? Well, because normally when I say that, people look at me like, "What?" <laughs> they do the same thing when I mention Raven. They're just like, "What?" And I'm oh, like, "Dude, Raven was so damn underrated." extremely yeah. christian um, christian was in the first wrestling match i ever watched and until this oh, wow. day 
Christian awesome. and Booker T will always be in my favorites because yeah, of that. Yeah, hell yeah. So. Yeah, that Booker T, like, I remember watching WCW before Booker T, like, won the heavyweight championship, and I was just like, I can't wait till Booker T wins the title. I was super, super excited because I just was like, man, he should be world champion. He should be world champion. He should be world champion. So when it finally happened, I was freaking out. Oh, yeah, big Booker sure. T fan, big MVP fan, which is funny because I remember being younger and watching WWE. And like, I didn't like MVP when I watched him at first. And then I went back and watched him as I got older. And I'm like, this dude is brilliant. What the, what was I watching? <laughs> like, I was like, what was I watching? Like, I'm wrong. Just all kinds of wrong. So what turned um, you off to MVP when you first started watching? I have no idea. I think I was just like one of them teenage smart marks. <laughs> didn't I didn't know it. any better. I get and it. the older I got, the more I became. Because a lot of people that I didn't like that much when I was a little younger, and I got to like my early 20s. Those are like my favorite people to watch. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Like I wasn't I wasn't a huge Randy Orton fan at first. And then somewhere around like 22, 23, like he was I was watching the product for him. Like I was yeah. just like, man, it's my favorite person to watch. It's, I don't oh, know. I, I have no idea. Orton Orton is absolutely incredible. And I want literally him. one of the greatest wrestlers ever. And I was just like, when I was 16, I was like, what? I ain't watching no Randy Orton. 22? I was like, bruh, who else is there to watch besides Randy Orton? Like, right. he's the best. And it's just funny because you watch uh you watch the post that the Young Bucks posted towards Orton and stuff like that a couple of years back and shit oh, like yeah. that and taunting him and stuff. And <laughs> it's just so funny because Orton is absolutely one of the best pro wrestlers. Ever. Litter in general, like litter across the board. He's probably one of the best wrestlers to ever live. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, absolutely. I mean, when it comes to pro wrestling, there's a couple factors you have to have a look, you have to have the in ring ability, you have to be able to talk on the mic. Orton yeah. has all three for sure. Um, without, without question. Oh, for sure. But it's funny that you mentioned that about MVP because uh, back in 2003 is when I started watching pro wrestling. And uh, oh, wow. in 2005, um, I think is when MVP and Mr. Kennedy both debuted around the same time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I didn't like the bad guys for the first few years of watching wrestling. I was like, Oh, yeah. he's bad. I don't like him, you know, but, uh, MVP I, and I Mr. think teenage me had that problem too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean that, I think shit, I was 12 or 13 when I started watching it, maybe 11, <laughs> I don't know, somewhere around there, but, uh, you know, I'll be 30 this year. So I've been watching it for a long time. Uh, yeah. But it, it's crazy because MVP and Mr. Kennedy came out and I'm like, dude, these two are fucking awesome. And like it changed my whole perspective about heels. Like, you know, yeah. I think Mr. Kennedy, it came from him doing the announcing thing with the mic drop. That, that was always so cool. That was, was I'm, I'm mad I didn't think of that first. It was one of the best, man. Yeah. You know, and uh, I think a lot has to do with him saying he's from Green Bay, Wisconsin, because I'm a Green Bay Packers fan. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of that had to do with like, oh, shit, like this guy is the coolest motherfucker ever. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, it's crazy because MVP, I mean, dude's story and, you know, his personal story that he shared and yeah. talked about in, until now, like it, it's it's awesome. And yeah. uh, not too long ago, we seen somebody, a, a fan, comment on that and start dissing on MVP. And I was like, dude, get off him. Like, yeah, like that. It's funny, too, because I think that's kind of around the time where I went back and watched like his work again without the like eyes of like a 17 year old and more of like a, as an adult. And yeah. then knowing his story, I'm just like, this is actually really amazing. And then to bring all that full circle i eventually like met him and got amazing advice from him just the coolest dude ever one of his his finishing move in japan like he let me he let me have like it's absolutely crazy that's why i was like why didn't i like watching him when i was 16 or 17 what the hell was i what was i think because even <laughs> if i go back and watch those same matches i'm like what was i watching this is amazing <laughs> Right. No, absolutely. And it's crazy because he's such a locker room leader and you can just right, get that right. vibe off him. He's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Like that's the um, kind of person that it's good for, it's great for younger wrestlers to have around. Oh, like for we, sure. don't, uh, we need more of that out here. Oh, absolutely. And that's why it's funny. Cause you mentioned, um, and it's, I said, we'd talk about this. Uh, you mentioned the her business on your tweet the other day on Monday when they reformed 
Um, yeah. You know, as you can see behind me, I have my Hurt Business poster. Um, Hell yeah. Hell you know, yeah. I'm a I'm a big fan of them. Uh, I had Charlie Haas on my show not too long ago. We were talking about Shelton. Um, That's awesome. And, and Shelton, dude, is unbelievably underrated. One of the best pro wrestlers. Brutally. Ever. Like, um, he I, he should have been at the top of the car forever ago. He's so, so amazing. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's crazy because you, you talk about locker room leader, and you have Bobby Lashley, Shelton, and MVP all around Cedric Alexander. And yeah, Cedric that, – that's a- that's an insane collection of talent in one oh, for group. Sure. For sure. Um, I mean, what do you think the story is going to be about that? I'm curious what your point is going to be about it. You know what? Like, and it's funny, it's funny too, because I was thinking about this with my, with, with my friends too. Like sometimes you friends have fallen out. It's a very easy story to put together. Like, Hey, we had some differences. We settled them. So we back to doing our thing. Like you, how often do you get into a fight with your friend? Like I've gotten into fist fights with my friends, and the yeah. next day, hey man, sorry about punching you in the face. You want to get a drink? <laughs> <laughs> it happens. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I'm hoping they tell a little bit of a story, like give us some kind of an explanation yeah. like that. I mean, like you make a good solid point on that for sure. Uh, you know, yeah, I. I shit the bed like i beat you guys up like we're cool now or some yeah shit. like hey sorry about that <laughs> oh man. for sure for sure um so let's get back to the basic here um where did you start training um and do you remember your first match almost a decade ago yeah uh so originally when i was in high school me and this dude uh andy he's a wrestler too actually down here in georgia we used to sit in chemistry class and talk about wrestling. That's all we did. We watched YouTube clips because YouTube was kind of a come, becoming a thing around then. So I was kind of getting in the ring of honor and stuff. And uh, we would just sit and watch wrestling and we would talk about Raw and SmackDown from that week or TNA or whatever we watched. And when we got out of high school around like, I, I didn't hear from him anymore. We got out of high school. And then about 23, or I think I was like 23, he hit me up and was like, hey, man, remember we used to talk about wrestling all the time? Well, I'm a wrestler now. And I was like, huh? What? So he invited me to a show in Milledgeville, Georgia, which is about two hours east <laughs> of Atlanta. And um, I drove out there not knowing what to expect. I just went to the show. They helped. They let me, like, help set up the ring and stuff, which I thought was pretty cool. And um, I watched the whole show. And then when the show was over, I was like, hey, dude, like, how do I do this? Like, who do I, who do I talk to? Like who trained you? Like what happened? So I came to the next show, did the same thing. They let me, I gave me like a black shirt to stand there in security. So I was doing security in this little Milledgeville, Georgia wrestling show. I didn't bump or nothing. I was just standing there like this. I had big <laughs> arms. And um, I met another guy named Steve Styles, and he was like, Hey, um, instead of coming down here once a month, here's where I train. I trained at this place in McDonough with this guy named Michael Taylor. Um, you should go there. So I was like, whatever. I was working two jobs at the time. So I worked like one job from 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then I went to my other job from 10.30 a.m. to like five in the afternoon. And he was like, yeah, we start training at like six. So I'm like, that's fine. Uh, I might be late because Atlanta traffic. Yeah. So that Monday I went down there, uh, met Micah Taylor, who was my original trainer. And just, it was off to the races from there. And, like, it was real – a lot of stuff came to me real fast, probably because of boxing, but then a lot of stuff didn't because I didn't have – like, I did a little jujitsu, but not enough for it to matter. And I did wrestle in high school. So all of that I had to learn on the job. And um, eventually it was, like, it was probably maybe six months into my training. They put us all on the show. It was, like, a battle royal in uh, November somewhere out here in – somewhere in Bumble, Bumblefuck, Georgia. And there was like eight of us. It was all the trainees that, so it was everybody I trained with and they just threw us in this battle royal. They were like, don't do nothing stupid. <laughs> Have a good time. <laughs> I, I bought some like used gear from my friend. I had some wrestling shoes, some kick pads. And uh, we went out there, it was easy. And after that, like the nerves were gone after that. After doing it the first time, I was just like, okay. So that's what it's like. All right, I think I get it. 
they know what I'm doing. And then after that, just now you just throw me anything. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. I, um, yeah. did you ever take a bump before training? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. I worked, uh, I worked at Home Depot and one morning the, the damn floor was slippery and I walked in and I'm just like, la 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 slip. And I was like, bam. <laughs> huh. Well, that didn't hurt as bad as I thought it would, but it hurt. <laughs> and That's it's so awesome. funny because my first day of training, when they like officially taught me how to bump, I was like, I hit the, he explained it to me and I was like, whatever, I'm going to just do it. Cause I'm the kind of person where like you explain something to me or you show it to me, I'm going to just do it. And if I can do it, great. If I can't, then I'll try something else. And I hit the mat. And I was like, huh, I'm going to have to get used to that. Like, that was not like, I'm thinking, I got I was getting punched in the face before this. I can handle that. There is no, there is nothing like hitting hitting the mat and wrestling. Nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. Maybe, since I never played football, maybe football is similar. I don't know. But, like, I knocked the hell out of myself. <laughs> it's like, I sat up like, okay. <laughs> huh. All right, let's <laughs> just look around like, uh, shit. Did anybody see that? Uh, right? Awesome. Like, uh, y'all, y'all, y'all weren't watching that, right? All right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then just, I got used to it after a while because that's why I tell everybody, like, you get used to it. Like, you know, it's going to, you know, the floor is going to catch you. Like, <laughs> this is all oh, you can yeah. do is get used to it. And, I mean, you probably wore non slip shoes after that, huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, no more, no more accidental bumps. You know? Oh man, that's awesome. Um, so you've wrestled internationally. You've wrestled <laughs> in Japan. Uh, tell us about your experience in Japan. Tell us about your experience traveling the world. <sighs> Japan, uh, uh, Japan spoiled the hell out of me. <laughs> I didn't want to come back. Uh, li- listen, if I wasn't married, I would not have come back. I almost 100% guarantee you I just would stay in Japan like yeah. I didn't want to leave as soon as I got off the plane there was like Nintendo characters on the wall like in the in the airport I think I, I think I flew to Narita and just I was like what oh god and then I had a guy like I pulled up the address to the dojo on my GPS and I just walked up to the the guy at the train station and was like hey I'm trying to get here and he walked me over to like the machine and showed me how to use it and like told me where to go and told me what stop to get off that. And just even even that, I was like, well, that was really nice of him. He didn't have to do that. And uh just it I got lucky that uh Michael Taylor spent most of his time after being signed to WWE in zero one. So he trained us like that. Yeah. So I was kind of ready for a lot of that already. So I was expecting to do 400 squats. I was expecting to do 200 Japanese push-ups. I was expecting to run a lot. I was like, all of that stuff was, okay, I know that's what I have to do. And uh, I just couldn't have been happy <laughs> doing it. Like, oh, if you, if there's probably video, because they filmed like a lot of our training and stuff, and there's probably video of me. I probably had the stupidest smile on my face mid-squat because I was just so happy to be in Japan because growing up watching Liger and Muda and seeing like all Japan from back then. And just, I was just like, this is that. Cause that was my, that was my original goal. Like my original goal in wrestling was not to get signed. It was to wrestle in Japan. Yeah. Now, now that I've done it, now I'm like, now I just want to do it regularly, <laughs> but just it'll, the respect around like what we do from not even just like the fans, but just from the general public will completely change your perception of, how you how you feel about pro wrestling so when i went over there when i came back i i, I was frustrated as hell before i went to japan because i just was like man i'm doing all this stuff filming all these promos doing all this work i'm going to all these seminars i'm showing up to shows trying to get on and nobody's giving me a chance bah, i'm angry girl and then i went to japan i came back super calm oh yeah well because they gave you those opportunities man yeah and i was just like well that also like helped my attitude too, because I'm like, look, if I'm good enough to wrestle in Japan, I like to think that means that I'm pretty good at things, or at least decent enough. 
Like, oh, right. Yeah. And just, and I mean, it's hard work. It's hard work. The workouts are hard. They're brutal. Like, drink your damn water, eat, <laughs> be, be ready. You have to do it. We all had to do it. Right. So you got to do it. You can't punk out of it. But it's worth it because you feel like you earned the right to be on the show. You feel like the earn you earn the right to be there. And I tell like I tell even the guys that we the newer guys that are coming into uh, Micah school now, I tell them all the time, like, look, man, like you don't know how you have it a lot easier here than you would if you were like probably coming up in England or coming up in Japan because the training is tough. And if you think like what we're showing you is hard, well, that's where we got it from. So just think about how think it's probably twice as hard because we're probably like not being as harsh on you as we could, but that's how we were trained. So we just regurgitated it to them, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. Oh, for if sure. You, if you're willing to get through it, totally worth it. Absolutely. And, you know, it must be really cool because you don't get a lot of, you know, especially how do I say it? Not being a name that a lot of people are aware of being able to get that opportunity in Japan. And that's honestly one of the coolest fucking things. Um, I mean, I, I enjoy your work. I think you're absolutely fantastic in the ring. Uh, I appreciate what you, that. What you do. I think a lot of, a lot more eyes need to be on what you're, you're capable of. Um, and, and that comes to your appearance on AEW dark. How did that come about? Mm-hmm. How did you get that opportunity um, I, uh, I honestly don't know. <laughs> it came out of nowhere. I literally just, I, I sent an email to AEW and it just was like, I, cause I did the same thing to NXT. Like I sent them an email and didn't think, I didn't think anything was going to come back. I didn't expect anything. I was just like, look, the worst they can say is you suck. We're never going to use you. <laughs> and I'm like, if they say that, okay, at least I know. <laughs> Yeah. But then one day, like, I was just checking my emails, and there was a an AEW email in there, and I was like, "Oh, oh, okay." So I went down there once, and then the, I went down there twice. Actually, the first time I went, we didn't get to wrestle. So if you watch, if you go back a few months and watch like Dark and Dark Elevation, like I'm in the crowd, red eyes and everything. <laughs> and then I went back the week after that, and then I finally got to wrestle. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it just, just kind of came out of nowhere. Just was not expecting it. I just I do the same. I did the same thing I always do. Like I, I shoot that shot and hope for the best. And if I get nothing, yeah. If I do, then all right, let's go. I mean, how was it? How was it to be in the ring with Team Taz? Something that's been one of the high spots. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's funny too. It also. This is, I don't know how this is going to sound, but I'm going to try to not make it sound bad. I feel (laughs) like I always, I always feel like I'm too small. But when I got in the ring with them, I didn't feel like that, despite the fact that they're huge, like they're huge dudes. But I'm like, okay, I feel like, I feel like I'm, I'm not bigger than them, but I'm comparable. Like I at least feel (laughs) like I look like I put up a fight as opposed, because at first I was like, man, I'm going to look like a scrawny child in here with Brian Cage, who's a giant gargantuan <laughs> monster and then Hobbs is a gar- giant gargantuan monster and he's taller than cage so I'm yeah. like I'm gonna look like a child and then when we got in there I'm like okay I actually feel like I look like I belong never mind all right I feel like <laughs> that confidence awesome. from like here to here <laughs> right that's awesome. that. no yeah. I, dude and I love that opportunity for you I thought it was awesome um you know it brought my eyes and my attention to you um especially because like I said earlier you know when it comes to pro wrestling you, you, you feature a couple different things, the look, the in-ring capability, the, the promos. Obviously, we didn't hear how you could talk on dark, um, but I've heard your stuff. I've heard how you talk after watching that. I'm like, dude, this dude has it, like, legit. Funny, um, funny story about that. As I was, like, I came back, I changed clothes. I had a promo ready to drop on my Twitter five minutes after I got out of the ring at dark. I'm talk like I was well aware that I was like, I don't know if I'm wrestling, but I'm going to prepare something just in case. Literally, like I went, I was changing clothes. I dropped that promo and I went right back out there. Like I was well prepared because I'm just like more people are going to hear my name today than have heard it in 10 years. Oh, yeah. I need to give them more than like whatever my appearance is on here, whether I'm in there for 10 minutes or 10 seconds. 
I just just my name ringing. I need to have something prepared so that more people are like, oh, like, so I'm talking 10 seconds. <laughs> and that video was out. Oh, absolutely. I was not, I was not playing. No, for sure, man. And that's what people need to know is like, you know, you got an opportunity and now you're making the most of that. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it's absolutely insane. And I've talked about it numerous times on my show. I was not the biggest fan of AEW as a whole up until All Out recently. Um, yeah. The biggest things that factored that I really actually enjoyed about AEW is things like Dark and Elevation, is the Nightmare mm-hmm. Showcase, uh, the Rhodes Factory Showcase, or the Rhodes Academy Showcase, because it gives – other opportunities to people that a lot of people don't know, Um, you know, and you've seen it with yourself and, you know, there's been so many other names that have come out on dark and elevation that people are like, yo, dude, this dude has it. Like, you know, you were one of them that I didn't know who existed outside of that. And uh, I became a big fan of yours after that. Um, So it's an awesome thing. uh, Dark and elevation. So many of my friends on there, like every week. So I'm just like, I watch the show. Because I'm just like, hey, that's my people. This is like, oh yeah, for sure, man. And yeah. To see guys from the Nightmare Factory that I've become good friends with, like TSF, Hunter, Hunter Nod, and Rosario Grillo, like seeing them on Dark, it's it's such yeah. an awesome thing. And uh, like I was talking to you earlier before we started, Josh Breezy, I think coming out of the Nightmare Factory Showcase Class One, I think he's yeah. going to be a main event player. When when he actually gets to get those opportunities, he's going big. I, I can yeah. see it already um shout out to josh josh what's up man um what's up josh, <laughs> what's up, josh? um <laughs> but yeah man i i 100 love what the nightmare factory does they they give those opportunities to everybody um you know I, I think it's such an awesome thing um aew with all out actually put me more on the map because i was like i wasn't a fan of them because i've said this numerous times i wasn't a fan of them because they took a lot of jabs at WWE and I thought like, all right, if you're going to be a product, focus on your product. Don't take jabs, focus. I remember that happening a lot with the TNA too. Like they should do that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I, I grew up watching TNA and I just love the matches. I didn't get involved in all that thing, but you know how social media is now. It's like, you got to be you careful kinda, what you say, you know. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to know. There's there's so much stuff that I don't want to know about that I know about, and I'm like, I wish I didn't know that. Because like, <laughs> I don't like I don't want to know people's business. Because I'm I'm su- I'm super private. Like and to the point where I know it like probably hurts me that I'm not like more open about everything. And and more power to the people that can be like that. But I'm just not built like that. Oh, I sure. I like to keep a certain distance. Because I just, I, I don't know, like, no, I don't have, it's not like I have anything, I'm not burying bodies in the backyard, but I still like, I don't like to have some separation. Oh, for so, sure. Yeah, I don't like to give out, I just don't like to give out too much. I don't even like to give out too much to people that I know personally. So. Yep. I get it, man. <laughs> yeah. I get just, it, for sure. <laughs> and it's just, and I'm just like, man, y'all can't settle that, like, over there. Oh, dude, I, I've seen it with podcasters, man. Like podcasters dishing about other other podcasts and stuff like that. I'm yeah. Like, why like can't that. we just get along, man? That's crazy. Like, yeah. Like, and I and I know we're gonna have like disagreements, arguments, and all that stuff. And maybe sometimes that might spill over into the public. Like, I've I've definitely had some times on Twitter where I had to snap on somebody. Like, but I try to keep that to a minimum, especially like a little older me. Tw- earlier twenty something me was a lot more volatile. Yeah, I've calmed down a lot since now. Like 18 to 20, I was still really volatile. And I got in the box and that calmed me down a little bit. And then I kind of I was still trying to fight off the volatileness. And the older I got, the more I was just like, you know, you should probably tone it down a little. Because I used to be one of those people <laughs> like on Facebook who overshare, like everything is happening. Oh, my girlfriend left me. Ah, mad, mad at her, mad at the world. <laughs> And I just kind of grew out of it. And then when yeah. I grew out of it, I had to go back and like delete all this stuff. I think I've done <laughs> that a lot where I just go back on social media and be like, yo, what the hell was I thinking? Delete, delete, yeah. delete. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't now I don't say anything that I don't that I regret saying. So like if I if I post something, chances are I'm probably not gonna delete it because I probably felt like that. Whereas oh, back sure. then 
I said stuff that I shouldn't say, even if I did feel like that. Now I know what to say and what not to say. And I'm just kind of like, all right, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to just, I'm going to talk to my cat. <laughs> <laughs> just pick Max up and be like, hey, Max, listen, this guy's a jerk. <laughs> and I believe it at that. <laughs> Don't you wish sometimes they could talk back to you, man? That would be the right? best conversation. Like, <laughs> I know. Because they hear everything. It's like, how do you feel about this? <laughs> yep. I talk to my dog all the time and I'm like, Hey, so what do you think I should do? And I'm just like, all right, you're right. <laughs> you know? Hey, you know what? The dog's just like, yeah, that's right. Tilt my head to the right. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, now we talked about this a little bit ago. Um, I've seen you've been in the ring with people that are also making big waves for themselves, bigger names for themselves. Uh, like Trisha Dora, you've been in the ring with Alex Kane um tell us about your your matches with them um and, and other names that you enjoyed working with it's so crazy to like see like alex like alex kane in particular it's so crazy to see where he is now because i wrestled him like literally i want to say the week before his mlw signing got announced we wrestled each other at some random show in bumblefoot georgia where there was like 30 people and and i'm just sitting here like man look at that you just never know <laughs> like you just never know but that was like our third match and yeah. we all like i always we always have good matches we uh he's just he's just really really freaking talented like i knew it was a matter of time before somebody signed him i don't know where i don't know when but i knew somebody was gonna sign him same thing with trish like i'm actually surprised she's not signed already i don't even understand that but she was in japan with me so yeah we, uh, and that was my first time meeting her, and we got along, like, from that. But uh, wrestling her, I knew, like, I knew we were going to have a good match. It was just some, I was trying not to have the same match that she has with other people. So I'm like, well, I can do the technical wrestling thing, but maybe I shouldn't because that's what people expect. And I ended up doing it anyway. I said I wasn't going to do a whole lot of wrestling. And I'm like, you know what? But I got to prove I can wrestle, so let's do it. And really. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? I said I wasn't gonna do this, but um, yeah. Just um, who else about who else have I wrestled recently? That uh, I um, oh wait, I don't I don't know if I can say that yet because it didn't come out yet. There's a I have a match. There's a match with me and somebody coming out on IWTV in the next few weeks. That he's uh he's been making a lot of waves too, which I is a match I wasn't expecting to have, but I kind of just walked into it and uh. That, uh, you'll know you'll know when you, you'll know when it pops up oh but for I, sure but i don't think i could say it yet because they're airing them in episodes sorry wrestlers lab i didn't say it don't be mad. <laughs> well well wait man I w but it's a wrestlers lab episode <laughs> absolutely iwtv is the best man uh, all yes, the wrestling yes. they show i'm still glad we have that oh me too i uh i wish i could afford it actually you know month to month still kind of broke but i'll get there i'm <laughs> We, we still, we still like, we ain't out the pandemic yet. <laughs> oh, for sure. IWTV though, man, I can't wait to get that subscription because there's so much wrestling on there. Black Label Absolutely. Pro, I want to watch their events every week, you know, or and like, every I, show. I watch a lot of my friends' matches on there because especially like, I don't know, I don't know how often other wrestlers admit this, but I always watch my peers' matches. Like, yeah. just one, because if I have to wrestle you, it's a lot easier for me if I know what you do already. <laughs> and two because we should like it's good to i never lost the like fandom part of being a wrestler i know that a lot of times that gets beat out of people once they start wrestling that yeah. never happened to me like i still watch the shows when i can like i don't have as much time as i would like but in the especially in the midst of like traveling on planes or you sitting in the hotel room you got time to watch wrestling and that's usually the first thing i go to if it's not a horror movie it's probably wrestling and um <laughs> Having that IWTV subscription, like I can see when people I like to watch are wrestling each other. Like they're like Anthony Heron is wrestling Minoru Suzuki. Yeah. At PWX soon. And I'm just like, well, I want to see that. Like not yeah. just because I want to wrestle both of them, but because I know what kind of match this is about to be. Oh, absolutely. And that's what I like to watch. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And uh, I had Anthony Henry on my show about two weeks ago. And Anthony, oh, cool. Anthony is 110% a workhorse. I, I can't yeah. wait to yeah, see yeah. that match. Um, he was in the gym, the show that we were doing, and he was working out. And I was like, dude, that is the epitome of a workhorse right there. Like, 
And Hilariously, I was almost in this that exact same scenario. <laughs> almost in the gym? I was about to go to the gym, and I'm like, you know what? I'll just do it at home, and I'll go after it. Like, I was literally like, uh, I could do the podcast in the gym, realistically, because ain't nobody there. Like, yeah, because I, I just work out at our school. So no one else is going to be there on Wednesday afternoon. It's usually <laughs> just me. So it works out, man. I mean, yeah. you know still get a workout in, you know, got to do your, you know, mm-hmm. it was awesome. Um, so you just mentioned horror movies. Who's your favorite yeah. horror movie? Uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Um, of all time. Yeah, uh, let's go all time. We're gonna, it's probably a toss up between night of the living dead, the original, the original candy man or, uh, uh, the first VHS, which is funny because I don't normally like found footage horror movies. That's what's hilarious about that. And I love VHS. VHS love. was very interesting. It was very like that, interesting. That movie changed my perspective on that whole genre. I was like, that was really creative. Yeah. Holy, even like the reasoning behind why people had the cameras in those stories was amazing. I was like, huh. Maybe that's why I didn't like these movies because everybody wasn't doing it like that. It was wild. That, that one was like, good, man. I thought it was good. I haven't watched any of the sequels, but the first one was absolutely awesome. The the first, honestly, the first one's the best one. The other two are still good. They're just not better than the first one. The second one is close, especially it had the second one particularly has an alien story that is like, if you aren't like a seasoned horror person who's obviously spooky as hell and likes to watch creepy stuff all the time, like me, it will probably scare the hell out of you because it, it's loud. There's lots of lights and the aliens. Are, like it's that's the, sec, the alien story is insane. Like, my, like I think I remember watching it with my wife and she was like, oh, shit, this is this is a creepy story, actually. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to check that out. Uh I see sequels with horror movies always make me afraid a little bit because I'm it's like, always, it's always hit and miss. I'm like, if you, you can't top know. that, man, it, you know, the conjuring series after that first one, man, I, I got kind of scared off of it. So I'm kind of afraid to watch the rest. <laughs> the, the, they're, uh, the other ones are maybe not as creepy as the first one. I don't know, man. I started to watch The Nun uh, not too long yeah. ago, and like just the 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 face of the nun just in the cover of it, I was like, I feel like yeah, I'm gonna they, get scared a little bit. So. They did a pretty good job with that with the creepy face. Yeah, I was a. Uh, I really liked the. Uh, I really like Hellraiser, too. I really liked the. Uh, I'm a big. I'm a big slasher dude, so I loved all the Halloweens, all the Friday the Thirteenth. Well, I'm not gonna say I loved all of them. Some of them are stupid. <laughs> like the, the one where he's like a part of some weird cult or something. I was like, okay, yeah. you don't need that. Like, you're, you're killing me. Same thing with Chucky. I'm like, why are there so many Chuckies? Well, I mean, Chucky. did you see the re- uh, did you see the reboot of Chucky a couple years ago that came out? Child's no, movie? I saw the picture of it. I hated how his face looked. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that great, but uh, the TV series has promise. I'm really looking forward to that one. So, wonder what, they the, have- what does Chucky do? in a tv show like what does he do for 10 episodes i wonder i don't know man but we'll see uh it's the same it's the same guy who played chucky in the original series uh the same voice actor uh oh, wow. and then the dude who played the kid in the first movie forget mm-hmm. what his name was andy the one that played mm-hmm. andy is the mm-hmm. one of the lead guys in the the tv series so Andrew. it's gonna be pretty cool to see that kind of play back huh. so we'll see what happens um but the horror movie stuff, does that kind of tie in with your goth gimmick? Um, not really. Uh, that just kind of, that was a, like, I grew up on just watching spooky stuff. Yeah. And it just never went away. Like, I was a big, uh, I was a big Universal Monsters kid, when, especially, like, in the early 90s. My mom would just sit me in front of the TV and, like, Dracula and Frankenstein and the Wolfman and everything would come on. And I would just be like... <laughs> and then early on i can't remember how old i was but somehow i stumbled on the hbo and saw tales from the crypt and that just ruined my life <laughs> like that was it i was just like okay i'm just one of those people who likes dark spooky stuff because i can't watch i can't take my eyes off this yeah and he's like oh i'm gonna watch something else yeah but all those horror movies is right there 
<laughs> so the crypt is right there. You just, you know, there's the crypt keeper. There he is. And I think um, it definitely has some, uh, it definitely has some influence on like maybe what I decide to do with my looks. Um, a lot of, hilariously, a lot of my influence for stuff that I do in wrestling comes from music. Um, okay. Even like the original Gothic Gangster nickname is uh, my friend gave me that nickname because I'm always listening to goth music. I hang out at goth clubs, but I'm also from the hood and like I can, it kind of turns on, like if I get mad, it turns on really quick. So since I'm chilling, I'm like not really that hyped up. And then the second I get angry, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm, I turn into DMX. So <laughs> and we was we was walking around downtown atlanta uh it was it was during like one of the it was we were waiting on the ring of honor show and we we're all wearing these black suits and we looked like like we looked like gangsters and he took a picture of us and he called me the original gothic gangster because i was wearing black suit and <laughs> the whole ride over there i think i had like Bauhaus or something on and he was like you know what this is you. And then when he said that, I just looked up like, oh, I think you started something. <laughs> and it stuck. Because then I was like, oh, okay. That's like the most me thing you could have called me. That's awesome. Which, yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. That's awesome. It's been, I want to say that was maybe six, seven years ago. Because it took a while for me to get the gear before I started using the nickname. Yeah. Because I had to find like the right person to make it. And I had to draw because I like I designed all my gear myself. So oh really? I had to draw it up first, and I had to like my drawing before I sent it to anybody. Okay, so I didn't know you you draw too. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. I have been slacking really bad because uh, <laughs> in between like being married and having a cat, and then traveling for wrestling, I be forgetting to bring my drawing notebooks with me. I have one in my bag now. In the last like couple weeks, I keep one in my book bag so that if i get the itch while i'm on the plane or whatever i can just pull it out and start drawing stuff that's awesome. sometimes i just i used to have it hit me and i didn't have anything with me and i'm just like well i'll just draw it when i get home and then of course when i get home i forgot what it was <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. man i didn't know you drew your own stuff though that's pretty cool man um yeah you know i i love the inspiration for when people draw their own gear and come up with their own ideas and stuff it's it's pretty cool um especially because you get to wear your own product and everybody gets to see yeah. it. Um, now, is there any dream opponents you want to have in the near future? I'm so glad you asked that because I used to like, I was so bad with this question because I was so frustrated with wrestling that when people would ask me, I'm just like, well, you know what, whatever, whoever they send here is who I want to wrestle. But really like, I thought to myself, man, you should actually really think about this so you can finally give people answers so that you're not a jerk. Everybody asks you. So now I actually have answers besides Minoru Suzuki and Masato Tanaka because I always say them. I seen and, your post, and that's why I asked this because I seen you post yeah. that the other day. So I figured I'd be the first to ask you. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> long story short, for the for the two of them, personality-wise, like I think that it would be fun for me and Minoru Suzuki to beat the crap out of each other and laugh at each other while we're doing it. And <laughs> Masato Tanaka is actually the inspiration for my finishing move. Okay. Because he does the sliding D. And I wanted an elbow like that, but I didn't want to do his exact elbow. And that's how I ended up coming up with the scar maker. Okay. Because I was trying different, I spent like six hours at training one day, just putting people in different positions and trying to find ways to like, jump and elbow them or slide and elbow them. and i finally came up with something and i started using it as a finish and people were like this noise from the crowd every time i hit it i was just like okay i think i got something here i'm keeping it <laughs> but then um some of my some of my dream opponents are people i've already wrestled like i would definitely want to wrestle alex kane again uh definitely want to wrestle trisha dora again there's a guy named joe black if you've never seen him before ask him, please look him up we call each other twin because people used to confuse us all the time, despite the fact that we don't actually look alike. We're just <laughs> mental, like personality wise, we're real similar. And we both got, we're both real, like really dark, like into like dark stuff. But even though we don't look alike, people kept joking about us looking alike so much that now we call each other twin. 
Yeah. Pro- is as far as I'm concerned, he's probably the best wrestler on earth right now. Um, but uh, if you've never heard of him before, look him up. I definitely want to. The last time we wrestled each other was like right when I came back from Japan, like December 2019, I want to say. We're both way better than we were then. So definitely would like to do that again. Um, I was on a show with Stallion Rogers recently. Definitely want to wrestle him because I watched his match. And I'm like, man. That would be fun. We'd beat the crap out of each other. Oh, for sure. As his I guess there's his a pattern. Headbutt, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's a pattern here for like what kind of people I want to wrestle, apparently. Um, Anthony Henry, twice that match has been like about to happen and it got changed. But when it was about to happen, I was nowhere near like ready for it back then. Cause it was like 2013, 2014. I was not the wrestler I am now. Yeah, I wasn't as comfortable as I am now with doing the stuff that I do. Because if you watch my earlier matches, I was not striking. I was not like suplexing people the way I do now, despite the fact that that's the stuff I was good at. So I would do it at training and I would get to the show and not do any of it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it was so bad. Because I'm just like, what if I drop him? What if I don't do this right? What if I do this? What if I do that? And eventually I was just like, okay, you should probably start doing the stuff you're good at and stop like playing it safe. Yeah, but um, uh, I've been wanting to wrestle J.D. Drake forever, and for some reason, can't get anybody to pull the trigger on it. Um, That'll be a hard-hitting match when it happens. Yeah, yeah. I never never got to wrestle uh, Darius Lockhart. Definitely want to wrestle Darius Lockhart. Darius Dude, I Carter, love that he just got the opportunity. Darius uh, Lockhart, I love that he just got an opportunity on Dark. Yeah, I'm so glad. So dude, bad. dude, uh, I tweeted at him back in March uh, oh, wow. because he's a very inspiring pro wrestler. I think what he does is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, but yeah. I tried to get him on my show. We were, we were going to set something up, um, but his schedule is just too busy right now. But we'll get yeah. there eventually. But uh, it's crazy I would because be, what's I'd that? Be more like him if I wasn't a whole ass demon. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like one of us has to be the bad guy, right? It's Trevor, obviously. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, like, no, man, it's uh, he's he's such a good guy, man. Uh, yeah. I that tweet that I posted is a tweet that actually changed my life mentally. Um, oh, because wow. a pro a pro wrestler, uh, Jackson Stone. I don't know if you know who Jackson is, but yeah. um, he responded back to me and he followed me on Twitter and we started talking. And he's a mental health advocate. Um, oh, and yeah. and he um. We talk, man, all the time. He's he's a very nice cool. person, and he's actually the person that helped me get into therapy and, and get my stuff That's straight. Awesome. And um, starting in October, middle of October, we're actually going to start doing a show once a month called uh, "Me, My Mental Health, and I" about yeah. mental health and try to get the awareness out there more um, because what he does is absolutely fantastic. And and That's tweeting awesome. out to Darius Lockhart, who's an inspiration got me to find another inspiration in Jackson Stone. So um, that's so cool. Hell yeah. yeah. I uh, thank you, Darius, for uh, for that tweet, man. Uh, but yeah, no, yep. dude, opportunity. Darius, Dar- uh, Darian Carter or Darius Carter, like you said, too. Another good one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like we've we've been in like a triple threat together, but we've never had a one on one. And uh, he's a, like, that's another guy that that's one of my favorite people to watch. Like. I seek out his matches. Yeah. Um, and you'd be surprised. And, and it always surprises people when they're like, oh, you seek out other indie guys' matches. Yeah. Like if you're good, if you're good, if you're good, you're good. Like there's no reason for me not to watch your work if you're not good. And I like to watch wrestling. So like there's only there's only so much wrestling on TV a week. But guess what else? Guess what else is always going on every week too? The freaking indies. Yeah. And there's some great wrestling out here. Um I left out. I left out somebody from Japan. Uh, I left out Muda. I don't know why I left out Muda, but Muda's still kicking. And I absolutely. And since I wrestled for his company when I was in Japan, I absolutely want to wrestle Muda. Um. Uh, him and him and Mara Fuji. Yeah. Like, yeah, I would absolutely love to face off with either one of them. Dude, I think um, you and Muda, you versus Muda, would be really fucking hot, dude, for sure. The spectacle alone <laughs> from the entrances. <laughs> right. Right. Because you know, because cool you know, I'm gonna have to order like special armor 
for that match because I know that I'm trying to match Muda and I've seen some of his entrances. He came out as a whole beehive one time. And I'm still <laughs> like, my mind was blown when I saw that. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Who, how did you even come up with that? <laughs> like, but the, I literally watched that whole entrance and he was walking down a ramp and I'm like, this man found a way to make a beehive into entrance gear. <laughs> what? That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Absolutely amazing. There's a, there's a whole lot of people in uh there's a lot of people in AEW I want to wrestle too, which is funny because like because I've been down there a few times, it makes it it feels really really possible. Like I would love to have a one on one with the Hobbs or Cage. Um, I would love to wrestle Dante Martin because of contrasting styles and the stuff he does. I can't do. So I would have to find a counter for it. And part of the fun is finding counters for your opponent's moves that you can't do. Oh, for sure. I mean, dude, Dante's been killing lately. Yeah. He's killing. I swear that dude ain't human. No, nah, dude. I mean, I've never seen half the shit he does. Can people jump that high normally? I like to think I could jump pretty high. And I'm like, that's that's not normal. <laughs> like, how are you doing that? He's anti-human, bro, for sure for real yeah. like that dude's flying oh this is a big one uh malachi black duh <laughs> oh maybe Devil we can have Devil. you join the house of black that'd be cool you know what you know what i would be okay with that look look me rising and abaddon and him you got a group already i mean dude after this show we'll tweet that out and make that happen because <laughs> you know like that, that you know that gets tweeted at us pretty regularly actually does it really that's how, so I, I work this show ARW in Florida, right? And Ryzen works there regularly. And I had never met him before. So we got tagged in a tweet. And I was like, huh? So then I watched AW. I'm like, oh, I see why people are tagging us together. Yeah, I, I can see that. And then Abaddon debuted. And then they started tagging on three of us. And I'm like, oh, I see it. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And then I met him at yep. ARW. And I was like, yeah, I see why they want it. I see why people keep tagging us and stuff. I don't know how to make it. I don't know how to make it more than it is. But every once in a while, we'll randomly get a, hey, Bryson, Abaddon, and Trevor should be a thing. And I'm like, I agree. Put us on I, TV. I think it'd be cool, man. It, it'll, you know what? You don't see a lot of that darkish stuff work the right way all the time. Yeah. You've seen yeah. it work with certain things. Uh, Dark Order, it was working with for a, a little bit. And then what's going on now is not the best. Um, but you've seen that with the Ministry of Darkness, you know, yeah. how cool that was. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would love to see that modern day kind of darkish feel. I think I your guys think it helps. I think it helps a lot too, especially for me. Like I tell people all the time that I'm not a dark character i'm a dark personality because yeah. i'm not playing like you can and you can my wife can 100 percent vouch for this the first thing i go to i go to dark stuff naturally i don't know why that's just how I, that's just how i am that's how i've always been so a lot of the stuff you see me wearing or doing is all part of like real life stuff like i'm wearing i'm wearing a left-hand path shirt not because it's spooky, but because that's what I'm really into. Yeah. Like, there's, I'm legitimately a member of the of the Satanic Temple. Uh, I'm legitimately a part of the goth scene, so I'm not like a wrestler who just wears a lot of black. And people are like, "Oh, that wrestler is like goth because he wears a lot of black." Like, no, the like, they're my friends are in bands. You see me at the same concerts. You see, and I I keep telling I tell promoters this too because like when my when my graphic for Dark Elevation popped up. It wasn't wrestling people that were going crazy. It was the goths. Yeah. Like I was getting messages. <laughs> like, and I'm in this. I'm in this uh, Facebook group called Sounds and Shadows. It's just a, it's a whole website for like goth music and all of that. And one of my friends runs it. And the group exploded the day my graphic popped up because they're like, "Hey, there's a legit goth wrestler on AEW right now. Like, this is this dude." we hang out with this dude this dude is at our events he buys our t-shirts he listens to our music like he's really part of this yeah holy crap because like the undertaker is a dark character but i'm pretty sure the undertaker don't listen to joy, joy division no i don't think so either i'm just saying 
I don't think so either. I think he listens to probably rock music for sure. I would I would like to think so. That's why I'm like, it's it's di- it's different when it's like authentic. And you, like you see Rising, normally you can tell that's his thing. Like you can tell that's his thing. Even if, every time I see him in a t-shirt, it's like a horror shirt or so. Like that's his thing. Yeah. So I'm just like, the authenticity is to to me that's a big deal because it makes it so much easier to just be yourself and go nuts with it oh for sure and you guys got the cool goatees going on too so I mean, <laughs> no, this is the only facial hair i can grow so <laughs> <laughs> like this i ain't got no hair follicles on the sides so i that's all that's it that's it i uh, just keep yeah. going man put a little I red in it I we're good beard but i can't yeah <laughs> I, I get it man i get it mine grows wild so i understand uh <laughs> you gotta throw a little red in it though man that's what it is i know right I if it, if it would stay, I could totally pull off a streak like right down here. Yeah. I Actually, think that I would might, work. <laughs> you might have you might have started something. You might have messed up saying that. <laughs> it's gonna match my eyes. Hey, we'll get it, man. I like it. Um right. final couple questions here. Uh if there is one promotion that you have not worked for yet, which one would it be? Um I have not I've helped out at New Japan events, but I haven't wrestled for New Japan. So I think number one is probably wrestling for them. Would you be okay with wrestling for New Japan strong in the U.S.? Yeah. Or... Same, same thing to me. Yeah. yeah. Just whatever, however it comes. I think, I think that'd be fantastic. I think that'd be awesome to see you get that opportunity because you do deserve it, man. I think, you know, a lot more eyes need to be on you. And I think doing stuff like that is actually going to get that attention. I would love to I see you on Dark again. For sure. I uh, I am working tirelessly to make that happen again. I would I definitely that's definitely on the list too, because I got a I have a list that I don't post, but I look at it. Yeah. And I'm just like, ah, oh, that's what I want to do. And that's definitely that's both of those things are definitely on the list. I um I would like to go down there a few times actually. <laughs> just well, to, hey man, maybe we could get you and uh like. maybe we could get you and Ryzen to be a regular team on uh dark at least you know that's what i said i'm like <laughs> well we already the last time i went down there i'm like well we're both here you got a match and i got a match just saying we'll have to make it happen man i i swear right. i'm gonna i'm gonna tweet it out when i tweet this we're gonna tweet this out i'm gonna share i'm gonna retweet the hell out of it <laughs> <laughs> i love it man absolutely Trevor, man, it's been a hundred percent awesome chat. I love talking to you, man. It was it was very cool um, getting to know you. Now we're friends now, man. I love it. <laughs> Party, yeah. Um, do you want to tell the fans where they can find you at on social media? Oh yeah, um, all of my social media: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter is Trevor Eon. T R E V E R A E O N. Um, I'm leaving out YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is updated regularly. In fact, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I said this on the last podcast, but I'm going to start saying it more often because most people don't notice my YouTube videos, the promos are all connected. They're numbered and labeled in order. There may not be posted in order, but they're on there in order. You can literally watch them and follow this entire journey from 2015 when I was a psycho artist to now when I'm a whole ass demon. Uh, <laughs> It, and it's, it's, I'm not done. Like, it's still going on. So, uh, by all means, keep up with it. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash TA face kick because my finishing move used to be a big kick in the face. But uh, obviously that changed because I elbow people now. That's okay. <laughs> Elbows yeah, are more dangerous, all, you know? Right? I agree. I 100% agree. Oh, man. Trevor, I loved it, man. I love this conversation. We'll have to get you back on the show for a part two. Um, yes. I think uh, I think in the near future here, I think we're going to get you on Japan and AEW Dark again. I, I feel yeah, it. Yeah, let's go. I feel it. So, But Trevor, thank you for joining me on the show for episode 42. Season one's coming. Season, season one's coming to an end pretty soon. So I, I'm glad I got to have you be a part of this season one. So, Yes, uh, thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. You guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Until next time, we are here next Wednesday with TNT, Terrence and Terrell Hughes, Devon Dudley's Twin Boys. It's going to be an awesome show as well. Can't wait to see you guys there. 
Trevor Aon, everybody. Check him out. Check his Facebook out, Twitter out, social media. He's an awesome guy, man. Thank you, Trevor. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Until next time, guys. Have a good one.